Hang on a sec. Okay, so um, exercise five in your lab manual is the spore stain. Okay, spores are created by bacteria under very um, stressful conditions. They end up in an unfavorable environment and they create these spores that basically allows them to create a hard shell around themselves and they hibernate, okay? Um, the spore stain technique is basically used as a way to determine whether or not bacteria can form spores. Um, and to be honest, not all can, okay? Spores basically, if a bacteria can go into sporulation, allow them to survive environmental upsets. So it allows you to basically hibernate until favorable conditions come around again, and then you can emerge and infect whoever you want to or whatever you want to. Um, <clears throat> so one of the most critical things when you're doing a spore stain, as far as when you're prepping to do a spore stain, is the specimen that you use has to be relatively old. Now, why do I say that? Because you want them to be stressed enough that they actually form spores. If you um, use a brand new culture, they won't have time to form spores. They won't be stressed enough to form spores. They are not in an unfavorable environment. And because they're not in an unfavorable environment, they're not going to form spores, okay? So when you do this, you need safety goggles, you need an old culture. We're gonna use B-Mega because one, it's the biggest um, bacteria that we use. And two, it does make spores. You're gonna need a hot plate. That hot plate is going to be used to heat a beaker of water, okay? You are going to need a piece of bibulous paper, the paper from your blotting um, book, um, about the size of a postage stamp. You're gonna need tweezers and you're going to need the specific stain, malachite green, okay? Then secondarily, you're gonna need safranin stain. So if I were doing this, the first thing I would tell you to do is set up that 400 mil beaker on the hot plate because just like at home when you're making pasta, it takes a long time for that water to heat up enough to be boiling and you want it at a rolling boil, okay? Now, why do you want it at a rolling boil? It's creating heat and steam that will basically soften the outside of that um, spore enough that it'll take up the malachite green. If you don't do that. Remember I said it's a hard shell. Nothing's going to get into that spore. Okay. So, um, you're going to set up your beaker, uh, about three quarters of the way full of water and you're going to put it on the hot plate, get it to start heating up. You're going to get your old culture of B mega. You're going to make a bacterial smear just like you did in lab two. <clears throat> you're going to tear out a postage size, a postage stamp size, of bibulous paper. Again, small, you want it to fit on top of your slide, okay? Once the beaker is boiling and it's producing steam. So again, you want it a rolling boil so that there's steam coming off of it. You put your um, slide in a clothespin to hold it so that your hand isn't over the steam and hurt yourself. Um, you're gonna place the, the um, slide across the beaker you're going to put the bibulous paper on top and you're going to start dropping malachite green onto that bibulous paper. The bibulous paper holds the malachite green in place. It keeps it on the surface of the um, bacterial smear because if you were to just put drops of it on there, it would just start rolling off, okay? So, when you are going to do this, you are going to put on your safety goggles, okay? That malachite green that we're using 
can just as easily go off of the side of the slide into the beaker or off of the side of the slide onto the hot plate. And it is a boiling hot hot plate. So what's gonna happen if water hits it, right? So you wear safety goggles to make sure that nothing splatters into your eye, especially Malachi green, okay? So you are going to keep resaturating that bibulous paper. You're gonna keep getting it wet with the Malachi green for about three minutes. Okay, you do not want the bibulous paper to dry out. Okay, so you keep adding it. Once that three minutes has passed, you're going to take the slide off of the steam bag. Okay, put it over your staining tray and you're going to rinse um, both sides of that slide. So the side where your bacteria are, the side on the back. Okay, make sure you get everything off of it. And as you do that, most of the time, that bibulous paper slides off with the moisture. No big deal, okay? But if it doesn't, that's what the tweezers are for. The tweezers are so you can pick it up and move it into your staining tray. So you're gonna cover your smear now with saffron and dye and allow it to penetrate for 30 seconds, 45 seconds that is actually going to stain the vegetative bacteria. Remember, the vegetative ones are the ones that are alive and actually doing what they're doing. Of course, ours aren't going to be alive because it's a bacterial smear, but it's going to be a different color than what you saw or what you're going to see for the spore itself, okay? Again, after that 30 to 45 seconds, you're going to take your water, you're going to rinse both sides. You're going to blot it dry with bibulous paper. Again, press, Move it, press, don't rub it, don't move it while it's inside the bibulous paper because you don't want to rub everything off. Once it's dry, you're ready to view it. Now, what you should see is something like this, okay? You've got green dots, but you also have the red stained vegetative bacteria. So the green dots you will notice are smaller than the red bacteria. Remember, spores are compact. So the green dots are the spores that we use the steam to allow our um, dye to penetrate, and the red are going to be the living bacteria. Okay? So you've got kind of an example. Um, I went through the procedure with you. Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Hey.